when our body is infected by a pathogen, then our immune system kicks in and try to protect our body from that pathogenic attack. And just after the pathogen has invaded the body, it would secrete their antigens or immunogens against which our body secretes antibodies. So definitely after a pathogenic invasion, the serum antibody concentration is increasing and it's a nice biomarker to understand that there is a pathogenic invasion. Now let's look at the same thing in a graphical format. Let's say our body is invaded by the pathogen and we are looking at the antibody concentration in the serum and in x-axis we are looking at days after which our, the invasion happened. This white arrow demarks the time of pathogenic invasion. So roughly about 10 days the IgM antibody concentration in the blood really increases and after almost 20 days IgG against that specific antigen is increasing. So after that I mean you can clearly see there is a lag phase between the pathogen invasion and the rise of the anti antibody concentration. Why is that lag? But this immune response is known as primary immune response. Whereas in case of secondary immune response, which is followed by a, another pathogenic invasion round, the antibody level increase is pretty quick. But let's look at the primary immune response first. In the primary immune response, there is a lag phase. And let's try to understand why there is a lag phase between a pathogen invasion and the antibody level increasing. So let's say this individual is infected by this pathogen and the pathogen came from a rusty nail which is actually poked inside the skin of this individual. Now these pathogens actually secrete a lot of uh, factors and a lot of antigens which are actually recognized by the dendritic cells and the macrophages. Now this dendritic cell and the macrophages engulf the pathogen. After that, the pathogen is degraded inside the endosomes and endolysosomes. Some part of them is actually displayed on the surface of these antigen-presenting cells on class 2 MHC. Now, after it recognizes the pathogen, it also secretes alarming molecules such as inflammatory cytokines, which would attract other cells such as other macrophages and the dendritic cells which are nearby to the location. Also, these dendritic cells which has recognized the pathogen would eventually migrate towards the lymph node. Now, lymph node, which is situated all over the body, is actually an army base camp because it has T cell area and B cell area. So inside the lymph node, there are specific regions where T and B cells reside. Now, after that, these dendritic cells would allow activation of the T cells and the T cells would allow the activation of the B cells. When the B cells is activated, quickly it forms a plasma cell. Now plasma cells secrete then and their antibody into the bloodstream, which can immediately act on the pathogenic antigen. Now otherwise, the B cells migrate to the germinal cell, migrate to the B cell follicular zone and in there, they Amplify, am, amplify and proliferate to form the germinal center and eventually they can be differentiated into the plasma cells or they can also die or they can become a memory cell. Now most of the cells which are activated by the T helper cell or independent of T helper cell would undergo cell cycle and thereby they would divide and grow in number but soon after the uh, first exposure is done and the pathogen is neutralized by the antibody then most of them would die and few of them would leave and they are known as the memory B cell. Now the memory B cell would have a memory of which pathogen has invaded the body and what type of antigen it has encountered and what type of against what type of antigen it has made the antibody. So next time whenever there is a similar pathogenic invasion it would create the same isotype of that antibody and really quickly. By that time, isotype switching has happened. So most of the prevalent form of antibody at this point of time is IgG, not the IgM. In short, what we see 
in the secondary immune response, the lag phase is pretty low because already the memory B cell had an idea that what pathogen has invaded the body, what type of antigen it produced, so it can quickly make the antibodies. Now first, there is a IgM mediated response, but here the heightened response is actually triggered by IgG because I, isotype switching has happened in these cells. And that is why the lag phase is pretty lower compared to the initial pathogenic uh, invasion or initial immune response. And this kind of immune response, which is mostly mediated by IgG and mediated by memory B cells, this is known as the secondary immune response. Now, the key player of the secondary immune response is the B cell. But have you ever wondered that where does this memory B cell come from? So about memory B cell, I would have a separate video. I would recommend you to watch that video. But if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.